The following video shows an arthroscopic excision of the acromioclavicular joint of this patient's right shoulder. Before I do this operation, I first perform an arthroscopic subacromial decompression. In order to better understand the video you're about to see, I think it is important to first view the video of the subacromial decompression. You can do this by going to my website, terryhammond.com.au, clicking on shoulder problems and then on bursitis and impingement syndrome. You can then watch the video of the arthroscopic subacromial decompression. This is a video looking inside a patient's right shoulder, looking from behind. The bone to our top right is the acromion, and the bone to our top left, being moved up and down my, by my probe, is the end of the clavicle or collarbone. The space or joint in between these two is known as the acromioclavicular joint. In the normal healthy state, the end of the collarbone there should be covered in nice, white, smooth, articular cartilage. This patient has lost almost all of his articular cartilage. The, there is bare bone visible on the end of the collarbone, and this would be a very painful joint. Here is a view of another patient's shoulder. Again, we're looking at the right shoulder from behind. He is a professional rugby league football player and his clavicle is even worse. He's got almost no uh, cartilage on the end of the bone. Uh, he's got a large spur formation and cysts on the end of the bone. This would be very painful. So in order to cure this problem, we need to remove a small section of the end of the collarbone, collarbone or clavicle so that the acromion and the collarbone don't rub on each other. Here is a different patient and you saw then the end of the collarbone being moved up and down. So from the front of the shoulder, I bring in a, a burr or a shaver that removes bone. And here you can see it now removing bone from the end of the collarbone. Uh, we aim to uh, leave a gap of about a centimetre between the two bones so they don't rub on each other. Luckily enough, with keyhole surgery, we can preserve all of the ligaments that surround this joint, or most of the ligaments that surround this joint, uh, meaning that the joint is still stable and patients have excellent function of the shoulder. And here is the end result. So we're looking at the acromion top right again, and this little probe here is being brought in just to show you uh, the end result. So that's the end of the collarbone. You can see the raw bone where the bone has been removed. And again, I'm getting my assistant to bounce it up and down. You'll see the probe coming in here at the front now and now at the back of the collarbone. And as we turn the camera up and look uh, up to the top of the joint, you can see the white substance just above my probe there. That's actually the top or superior ligament of the joint which we've left intact. So this should have an excellent long-term result. Patients can get back to all normal activities virtually immediately and play sport uh, very quickly. This is another case where I'm resecting the end of the clavicle uh, and you can see one of the problems of shoulder surgery. Here is a tiny vessel much smaller than a millimetre towards the top of the picture and you can see it squirting out blood. This means our view is very poor. We need to bring our diathermy in, coagulate the vessel and continue on with the operation. If you would like to learn more about acromioclavicular joint excisions or about any other shoulder problem, you're welcome to visit my website at terryhammond.com.au.